Hi, this is Nancy Herald, and welcome to my show, High Road to Humanity. In every episode, I tell you powerful true stories filled with great wisdom that you can use in your own life as you strive for a higher road to travel. My featured guests will have their own unique stories to tell that enlighten your mind and your soul. So kick back, relax, and learn the secret to success when you take the high road. Hi, this is Nancy Yerald, and welcome to High Road to Humanity, and we have our astrology expert here, and it is January 2023, and Happy New Year, Claudia Trevelis. Yes, Happy New Year, Nancy. Can you believe it? Can you believe it's already 2023? I'm so glad. <laughs> Thank goodness. I mean, thank goodness to get 2022, 2021, 2019 out of the way. I mean, oh. about intense astrology, all three of these years. I, I mean, we, we need a break, right? From we, all do. That. we do. Well, I'm going to let you just take it away because you say 2020 year or 2023 is the year of Colas and the chaotic and shattering planet energies of the past three years. So 2019 to 2020, you say, was constrictive, which it was because of the pandemic. Right. 2021 and 2022 was polarization, which it has been. I mean, it's been a complete polarization. So here we are, 2023, what's going to happen? And the reason I like the word coale we're coalescing yeah. is because like, it, it was almost as if we were getting used to life being the way it had been in the last three years to some degree, right? I mean, yeah. that was really extraordinary times in terms of astrology. And it would manifested itself in the world, you know, not just in, you know, our our lives, but in the entire planet. That's true. And, and it's important, I think, for us to all realize that, that you know, life is not going to continue like that. Thank I mean, God. It, it, I think there might be pieces of it. You know, it doesn't mean that life is going to be smooth and on a cakewalk, you know, forever and ever, because right. there's always going to be some, something's always happening. You know, there's always some good aspects some difficult aspects. As humans, we all have, you know, times of up times and times of opportunities, and we have times of challenges. Mm -hmm. But those particular years were quite different. You know, the astrology where aspects that happen every couple of hundred years. Yeah. Well, I, I happen it was intense for me the last couple of years. I will yeah. say that. Well, from 2019 all the way through. I'm just really happy to be in 2023 because there's opportunity, you say, and I know there is. I feel it just like you talk about for renewed hope and inspiration, you say. And those are key words for the month of January. It's like we're really we're really readjusting. We're we're starting to realize like is it you know is this stuff going to continue that we've been through? You know, do I have to be afraid of this or do I have to feel you know this kind of energy coming at me? And to realize that things are going to start to not immediately. You know, it's going to take a little time, but little by little, things are going to things are shifting into another vibe so to speak, you know, the vibratory atmosphere is really going to be quite different, especially by the time we get to 2024. But 2023 is a major prelude to this. In January itself is a time when we can start to get glimmers of hope and new inspiration and to feel like, who, I, who am I now? You know, what happened? You know, what happened in these three years and what changes have I been through? And it's certainly worth going, it's certainly worth the in introspection and really taking a good hard look at yeah. how you feel different, you know, and what's really shifted. Wow. Especially I, as we get to the end of the month. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I start thinking about, it. you say think back and I'm like, wait a minute, I've completely changed. Yeah. Have you I'm completely sure. changed? There's been a lot. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's it's, I mean, yeah. honestly, 
The whole world has changed. Well, I like 2023. It's my number. 23 has always been my number. Both my kids are born on the 23rd. I don't really say this very often. And my grandson is born on the 23rd. 23 has always been my number. And so I've waited for a long time for 2023 to come because I knew it would be a good year. I don't know why. I just intuitively knew it would be a good year. But you're telling me we're going to have creativity in 2023? that mm -hmm. there's gonna be a change in the collective tone, that we're gonna have more clarity. I like this. Will you say new techno techno technological advances? Wow. What do you yes. think? Let me explain a little bit why these- All right, uh, okay. Things, why I'm saying that these, this is what's coming. Okay. You know, why 2023 is a prelude to some of these shifts. So, a couple of the major planets that were active in 2019 through 2022 are changing signs. And when the outer planets, the slow moving planets, in this case, it's Pluto, Saturn, also Jupiter just changed signs again right before the new year and it will change signs again in uh, May. And, uh, you know, that creates a shift, a, a shift in the whole consciousness of people. And it takes a while. Like, for instance, Pluto will be, it will move from the sign of Capricorn, where it's been for like the last 20 years, into Aquarius, where it'll be basically for the next 20 years. 20 years, you guys. I just want everyone to hear that. Because when I saw that on your notes, because she, give she gives me cheat sheets, you know, you guys. But... It's the age of Aquarius. And we both, you know, if, if you guys are old enough to remember the song by the fifth dimension, this <laughs> is the dawning of the age of Aquarius. And it is, this is it. This is what they were singing about. And you know why? Why? From an astrological standpoint. And yeah. don't forget, astrology is the science. Like if you can count on anything, you can count on astrology, you yes, know, it's first. the stars as it connects to the, yes. to our planet and as it's a gateway to the entire universe. Yeah. So, you know, the stars matter. So right. the reason it's important is remember back in um, the winter solstice of 2020, when there were two stars, Jupiter yes. and Saturn that were together and people were calling it like the star of Bethlehem, you know, it's a, you know, it was that powerful an event. And it was because that doesn't often happen with Jupiter and Saturn in the air signs. So basically that's something that, um, you know, was somewhat rare. Well, that all happened at zero degrees of Aquarius. Okay. Both of those planets were at zero Aquarius. So okay. some, uh, some people, some astrologers call this the uh, beginning of the Aquarian age, the actual beginning of the Aquarian age. Well, Pluto's going to go into Aquarius and five times it's going to go back and forth at where that exact conjunction was at zero degrees of Aquarius. Really? Yeah. So it's like accentuating that energy. So what so happens when it goes back and forth? It accentuates it? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Because Pluto is so powerful, it's all about transformation. So what it's basically going to do is it's going to see, okay, so what's not in alignment with, with the age of Aquarius? Wow. You know, and it's going to, you know, and Pluto is also the energy of like volcanoes. You know, I mean, it's going to dig out whatever is not in alignment, throw it out there, you know, like Pele, <laughs> spew oh it out. <laughs> oh. And, yeah, and really make sure that people get it. You know, this is what's important. Gotcha. You know, yeah. there's one thing on here, and I hopefully I'm not skipping ahead too much, but in March, you say there's seven planets that change signs. Yeah. And to me, that was a lot. I mean, that's crazy. What? That's like a big deal. What's going on there? Yeah, well, it's a big deal. So these two major planets, Pluto and Saturn are two of the ones that change signs. In oh. addition, there are some of the smaller ones, you know, or the ones that move more quickly. So, I mean, planets do change signs. You know, the sun changes signs every month. Oftentimes, you know, and Mercury and Venus usually change signs 
right along with it and so does mars but the fact that the major slow moving planets that are really marking a shift and there's so many other planets changing signs it's it's pretty interesting another interesting tidbit of information is the next five i believe it's the next five full moons are all taking place at 16 degrees of the sign so what does that mean so <laughs> so it's almost as if it's like we got to get stuff like it's time for society and humanity and the collective to get it well when you yeah. say 16 i say six and one is seven and that's a holy number and 2023 is a seven year Right. So that's what I pick up. I pick up that it's God coming in saying, okay, here's your chance. This is, I pick up intuitively, this is your last chance to get it together. Yeah. Cause this is a seven year. And what's a seven year about? It's a, it can be a highly spiritual time. It is. But it's also a time where you got to really do that inner work. You know, it's like, it's a time to go inside, really be clear. Wow. Yeah. Yes, to who you are, what you want, what's important to you, and to be one with the universe, you know, with God, with that spiritual energy. It totally makes sense to me as you tell me this. I'm yeah. so glad you come on to tell us this stuff, because it does. It really makes a lot of sense when you talk about this stuff. Now, I'm going to, I had to write down my notes, you guys. I'm in an in-between place. I didn't get to print them out, so I have to kind of go back and forth. But so Pluto moves into Aquarius for the next two years, right? Well, for the next two, so Pluto is going to. For the next 21 years. It's dipping its toe in Aquarius. So for almost three months, Pluto is going to go into Aquarius and it'll go back into Capricorn. And then in 2024, it's fully in Aquarius. But that's sort of symbolic of what 2023 is. And even more importantly, 20 the month of January, because the month of January is about, you know, this coalescing, this shifting, this seeing how what we've been through isn't permanent, you know, that there's something new coming in. And what right. are the new waves that are coming in? Right. Do and, we go ahead? I'm sorry. I was going to say, we want to talk about the month. So, yeah, so Pluto's been in Capricorn since actually for 15 years, not 20, since 2008, but it will be in Aquarius for 20 years. Because don't forget the Earth, the, uh, you know, our okay. system functions on an elliptic. The planets okay. are, don't re revolve around Earth in a, in a perfect circle. You know, it's an elliptical sh shape. So, so they, you know, that's why there's a difference in the number of years. But what's so different about this is that Pluto in Capricorn was all about hierarchical structure. Okay. So it's a top down. Okay. It's like governing from the top down. That's why there's been so many shifts in government, et cetera. And various things, you know, the monarchy, you know, many countries have experienced these kind of shifts. So Pluto in Capricorn was... Pluto and Capricorn was all about somebody saying, this is what you have to do. You know, it's top down. These are the rules. These are the regulations. This is what you have to do. Been since so it, right? Hmm? That's been since 2008. That's been going on. Okay. Yes. That makes sense. Okay. All right. So the power you know, it, over us is what you say. There's been power held over us, which I feel that that's exactly the truth. You know, don't you? Yeah. yeah. Pluto and Aquar Aquarius is all about power coming up from below. You know, it's power from the people. Well, yeah, because not to get into, but look at all the homeless people right now. I mean, I, you watch, I don't watch a ton of TV, but when I do see it, I see all these people who don't have a home and the craziness that goes on. I saw in California that, of course, you know, they say, oh, they're going to build these houses for the homeless. And then a door is like a million dollars, you know, and they get stupid on it. And then the people still don't have any place to go. And it just doesn't make any sense. And it's all because it's not done properly. So will this, that kind of thing will change. Yeah, as well. all that kind of thing. So yeah. it's also localizing things. So instead of big, you know, big governments, big rulings, big top down 
right. it's more, you know, where moral will take place at the level of community. So right. it makes community a lot more um, important. And, you know, it's important for people to find their people. I know, it really is. Um, well, so this is the age of Aquarius and you say also it's the rebirth of democracy. Um, and so that is when you talk about the power shifting back to the people, but you also mentioned on your notes, and I wanna ask you about this, the Magna Carta you, you put on here was in 2020 or 1226 and the French rights of man was in 1789. Talk about why you included that. Claudia. The previous time, what we do in astrology often, because there are cycles, right. and there are historical cycles, right. is you look back to the previous time in history when Pluto was in Aquarius. So those are examples. Oh, okay. Evolved out of those times. You okay. know, when we say that democracy will be strengthened with Pluto in Aquarius, I mean, it doesn't mean that Im immediately it's going to be grasped onto because. Pluto digs out, don't forget. So Pluto's going to dig out, you know, it's the energy of the volcano, you know, it's going to throw out whatever is not working for the people. Well, yeah, look at the Republicans right now. They can't get it together and get a Speaker of the House. I mean, seriously, everything's at a standstill right now. And, you know, everything's just so backwards. It's not done proper. Yeah. I mean, I'm just... Yeah. That is an example because I'm watching it all go on and it's ridiculous. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, now, so Saturn moves into Pisces on March 8th until 2025. Talk about that. So the other planetary shift, don't forget. So Pluto goes into Aquarius on March 23rd. Saturn, which is also slow moving. And, you know, Saturn has an 18, basically a 28-year um, cycle, wow. you know, every 28 years. And that's why people that don't know much about astrology sometimes will be familiar with the terminology, their Saturn return. You know, right. when you're 28 to 29, that's when Saturn comes back to the point it was when you were born. And that marks maturity. Like, that's when you're considered to be grown up. Okay. The second Saturn return happens somewhere around 56, 58. And that's when people reevaluate like, okay, I've accomplished this, that, and the other. Now, what is it? You know, what do I want to, uh, what, you know, what's my legacy going to be? What do I want to accomplish during my lifetime? Mm -hmm. And some people check out at that point. You know, it's like, okay, I'm done. You know, this is, I've done what I want to do. And, Thank you know, God. And they go, and uh, you know, it, you know, others can look at planning ahead for whatever. Yeah, you know, we call it retirement. Yeah, <laughs> I don't believe in retirement. You know, this is my big year this January. I have a big birthday coming up this month, and it's exactly what you said, except that I have so much that I want to do. It's almost like. I could only speak for myself, but I, I always like to tell the audience, you know, from experience, I feel like I've learned the last few years so much, but now it's just like, take everything I learned and just move forward with it. And it's like a whole new beginning. And it's like, I have so much that I want to do. I mean, I've got another 20, 30, 40 years of work that I just want to get out there. And so it's either you go for it like that, or you check out. That's interesting. Yeah, so think about what you're saying. You went, you just went through your Saturn return and done evaluation, and you know yeah. what's come up is this new beginning of all these things. You know, call it your bu your bucket list. Yes, and that's exactly right. I mean, you're right on on this one. I have to say, Claudia, and it's exciting. I think you say, um, and here's what I really loved about your notes when you talk about Saturn. Um, moving into Pisces on March 8th until 2025. You see, it highlights spiritual integrity. I love that. Um, yeah. Spiritual service, blending spiritual and science, what I talk about all the time. It's finally happening. The only thing I didn't understand that I want to understand, you said there's going to be issues around water, blood, and the immune system. Would you explain that? 
complete. Okay. So, so every every planetary placement, every planetary interaction has its gift and has the shadow side. Okay. You know, it depends how the energy is used. Okay. So the gift of Saturn moving into Pisces is that you know it highlights uh, spirituality really in a way you know daily spirituality. You know, not just going to church on Sunday and, you know, being. Talk to the talk, we can't walk the walk. <laughs> right. <laughs> so we can expect that is a gift of it. On the other side, the shadow side is that when people aren't doing that, that's going to become more obvious. Interesting. Yeah. So similarly, Pisces rules water. Yeah, it's a water sign. It's ruled by Neptune. Neptune's the god of the water. So there can be more attention being paid to water, the water we drink, you know, droughts. Also, climate change as it affects flooding. Interesting. Yeah, and sometimes the shadow side might be that there could be more incidents, you know, hopefully not, knock on wood not. Right. But, you know, Mother Nature is going to, be heard one way or the other here right and in this case it's likely to come through you know water and similarly our bodies are made up of you know i've seen i did a, a little bit of uh research about this yeah i you think 70 percent. you put 50 but i think we're 70 percent water well when i looked it up yesterday it was saying between it can be between 50 and much higher right and the person age and where they live etc so that's oh, why because I, that. I was i i initially had a higher number because i thought we were more like 80 90 percent water yeah but anyway i moved it back but the point the bottom line is where there's a lot of water in us yeah and it's, it's not just water but also the universe is made up of plasma you know there's a lot of substance plasmic substance in the universe and so these are these are areas that there's going to be more of a focus on. You know, people are just naturally going to focus more on, um, you know, their bodies, the water in their bodies, which contributes to how well you're taking care of yourself. You know, how pure is the water you're drinking? Interesting. Are you drinking enough water? And how does the immune system get affected by water? That's really interesting. That really pushes me to drink more water because <laughs> I don't yeah. drink water. And I think that everybody should. And yeah, it's a good idea to do it. Okay. So and this similarly, the blood, you know, is our liquid in our body. So there may be more things with blood. But what's really interesting about this, and I gave an example, and, and there's actually a couple of examples of how this you can influence water and plasma just by thoughts. So negativity, and there's been some studies on that, like Amoto, Amoto I believe is the yeah, name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wrote, right. yes, um, I can't think of his first name and I should know it, but he, he experimented with water and froze it. And he did it with, uh, when he said like ugly words, the water went crazy. Mm -hmm. And when he said beautiful words or play beautiful music, then the crystals, they would freeze like beautiful. Yeah. And so water is, uh, can be manipulated by our energy or it is affected, I guess, by our energy. And just like we're affected by the energy and that's what you're getting at here, right? That's my point. Yeah. So it's the water, it's the water in us. So thoughts are going to be, you know, thoughts are important. You know, what you're holding in your beingness is affecting your whole being right that's why it's so important that everybody go within and work on themselves because in order to ascend and, and i'm speaking for myself too because i still got stuff i have to work on i'm not perfect and and nobody is we all have stuff that we have to work on but the more we work on it the healthier we become physically because we're releasing that negative energy bingo and that's the whole, that's our job in the month of January is really to use this because some of the major planets are retrograde. Those include Mercury is retrograde. Mars is in Gemini, which is ruled by Mercury, is retrograde. 
So that's like a double hitter for Mercury retrograde. And people that know a little about astrology sometimes will say, oh, Mercury retrograde, you know, that's terrible. That's a bummer. That means equipment's going to break down. It means things can change, et cetera, et cetera. And, and that's true. It's, it, when planets go retrograde, it actually makes them stronger. Right. So in retrograde is uh, the prefix, which is re, is govern, governs what we want to be doing when planets like that are retrograde. It's like review, reevaluate. Right. Re well, you see Mars, Mercury, and Uranus are all in retrograde and that we should wait until after the 22nd to do certain things. Now, I'm just going to throw this out here. <laughs> I need a new phone. And I read your thing and I, I was going to order it. And then I got your notes and I thought I need to wait to order the phone. Yes. I mean, personally, I would. Yeah, I would. Yeah. Yeah. Because it could come and it wouldn't, it might be screwed up or something might be messed up. So it's better. Or it may not. But again, it's all, you know, we're dealing with probabilities and possibilities. So it doesn't mean like the world has to totally stop. But it also means that you want to get you want to be more inner than outer. So in terms of optimal timing, the best time to take action is after all three of these planets change direction and go direct, which would be after the 22nd of uh, January. January. Yes. All right. Well, I'm going to take your word for it and I'm not going to order the phone yet. I'm going to wait until after. <laughs> Or to buy a car, or to you know anything mechanical, or to sign leases. Well, I, I mean sometimes you have to, right? Sometimes you have to, yeah. Well, and this just let's see, when did they go into retrograde? They've been, um, yeah. You, it, usually Mercury is retrograde for like three weeks. So let me tell you exactly when it went. In. I'm just curious now. <laughs> I know, I know, and that just popped out of my mouth too to mention about it, about leases. So Mercury went retrograde on December 29th. Oh, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> I just so, signed to release you guys, but I did it before. So it's only retrograde for three weeks. Yeah, so I did it before. Back on January 18th. Isn't that funny? Well, yeah. Okay, well, thank you for that, because I'm going to wait. Now, they don't go, okay, so all, after January 20, 22nd, all three planets are direct. So that's a good time to take action, you say. And not only are those three planets direct, but the sun will have changed signs. It moves from Capricorn to Aquarius on the 20th. There's a new moon in Aquarius on the 21st. So it's, it's, it's good to start new things on new moons. You know, usually a day or two after a new moon. Right. So it, the moon is moving from a new moon to a full moon. Right. A more energy. I mean, sometimes you can't do these things, you know, if we, no, you know I to make the best of it. But if you can, that's a good thing to do. And what's also interesting is how the seventh, which is Saturday. I was is, just bring that up. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's the beginning of a new Mercury cycle for the next four months. Like this is seriously a time for planning and revising. I, not to be afraid that you make a plan and, it, and then you realize in two weeks that it, that plan wasn't great, you know. So this is a time to do that. So make plans, revise your plans, think about what you want to accomplish you know, revise those plans, like look at it again, keep looking at things every th three or four days or two or three days as the moon changes signs, because that will give you a different view on the same issue. Yeah, it's really interesting um, that you keep bringing up the moon. I've been doing my angel readings um, on actually on my um, YouTube channel, and I've been doing them a little bit on TikTok too. And the moon cycle card keeps coming up. Mm -hmm. And it's, so what you're saying really resonates because, and I keep telling people, pay attention to the moon, pay attention to the moon, because the energy of the moon, because we're energetic souls and it's energetic, is affecting us. And what does the moon do? It has a gravitational pull on water, on the oceans. True. 
Yeah. So it's a whole thing. That's, yeah. It just keeps coming up. I just thought that was really interesting that it comes up. Um, like so these flooding events, some of these major flooding events that have been going on, you know, are heightened when something happens, when a storm happens on a new moon or a full moon. Okay, I gotcha. So January is a month, and I love it because January should be the month where we plan for the year and where we start new things and we kind of, you know, how are we going to do it? And, and that's what I'm doing right now. How about you? Are you doing the same thing? Yeah, well, usually we want to, you know, oh, January, let me make my resolution. Let me, you know, start a diet on, you know, January 2nd or whatever. Right. This time it's a little bit different. And that desire to move forward is accentuated because Jupiter just went into Aries. So Aries is like gung ho, you know, let me, let me go for it. You know, what do I want? Because Aries is all about the, you know, I am, you know, I am me and this is what I want. I want to do it. I'm not going to sit here and be patient. So, so there's a desire to not be patient, but there's a need to be patient. There's a need to really look at what it is you want to do so you can be active in looking at stuff but you know hold back a little in terms of actually taking the action so that's counter to how most years begin usually there's not you know three and three significant planets that have to do with the mind basically because yeah. uranus kind of governs revelations intuition Mars and Gemini is all about, you know, how is my mind? You know, what stories am I telling myself? Do I need a new story? Mars has been retrograde for a while and it will continue, you know, to be in Gemini for a while. So it's been uh, like seven months of the mind. You know, what are these stories? What are, how do I express myself to people? You know, the power of the word. Yep. <laughs> I had Shelly Campbell on the show. We haven't put it out yet. Yesterday we recorded and we were talking. It's all about affirmations. She was mm -hmm. talking about money and she's the money lady. And she always talks about all the affirmations that you say. And uh, one of hers is people love to give me money. <laughs> but mm -hmm. but we were talking about the spoken word and, and I was talking about how Jesus talked about it in the Bible. And then she said the very beginning in Genesis, God says, Right. In the beginning, there was the word and the yes. word, the word, I don't know the exact words, but the word was God or. Yeah. Yeah. And that really, I had forgotten about that. And when she said that, it really hit me hard. I was like, yeah, you know, and that's really coming out. Um, what we say, what we think. I like how you were talking about how these planets affect our mind and the stories that we tell ourselves. And it's time for a new story. It's time for a new story. And this all feeds in with the Saturn and Pisces, because again, our bodies are impressionable. You know, our bodies are probably more impressionable than we give them credit for. Right. And the universe is more impressionable. You know, the vibes, the plasma, the substance that things are made of are really more influenced than we realize by our intentions, our thoughts. Um, can I, I want to ask you a couple of things. I, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I just want to ask a couple of things that I was just curious about. What do you think about the war in Ukraine? Is that thing going to, astrologically, did you kind of, you think that thing's going to be done? Is it going to? Well, I think a lot of the glue that made that, that Saturn Uranus square that was going on in 20 and 21. And that, again, that's sort of a top down thing, you know, this whole fascism, et cetera, et cetera um authoritarianism is is pretty top down so i think a lot of that stuff is going to dissipate i'm not sure how soon you know it would be nice if it dissipated sooner than later for these poor people that are suffering but i just wonder and do you see anything i i really i worry about the homeless population it's it's to the point where i see it's oh it's becoming either you have or you have not mm -hmm. And that's all part of the shift over the next 20 years with Pluto and Aquarius. And then you can say, well, is it going to take 20 years or 15 years for this to happen? But I think this is the value of having Saturn and Pisces, because Pisces also rules compassion. 
So right. Where people don't have compassion, because don't forget the shadow side emerges as well. So when people are not compassionate, it's going to stick out like a sore thumb. Well, yeah, we've lost our compassion for our human man, for each other. It's really sad. You know, mm -hmm. I I see it and um, it's a sad situation. People don't care about each other and that's got to change. I, I would like to see, and I just want to reiterate, um, I would like to see more compassion. I would like to see more truth, more mm -hmm. respect. Will mm -hmm. that come in the age of Aquarius? Absolutely, because Aquarius has to do with truth. It's individuality. It's, it's each person's truth. So it's not like what I tell you your truth should be. My own. It's what you come up from inside you to be your truth. You know, what is bubbled up inside you to be your truth of who you are. And the Jupiter in Aries, which is, you know, there for the next couple of months, is more about, okay, who am I? You know, this is who I am. This is what I want. This is who I am. But at the same time, we've got Uranus has been in Taurus. And that's awakening values. Because Taurus is all about what's important. What's important and what can we, you know, what what's sustainable at a certain level? Mm -hmm. The Capricornian energy has been that too. That's why I think things like infrastructure coming out as an issue has been important because when Pluto was in Capricorn, which rules structures, and previously when Saturn was in Capricorn, it was like, okay, but you know, what structures are lasting? Gotcha. It's going to be an interesting year. It's going to be a very interesting year. And the nodes of the moon are in, um, are also in Taurus right now. And they're going to move into uh, Aries and Libra in in uh the how you know in june so the combination of all these energies the the um the uh aquarian energy the piscean energy more of this taurus and aries kind of energy it's putting the focus back to the individual and what are our values you know how are we connected to the divine how do we affect everyone else right you talked a little did you talk a little bit about venus you said you see the love coming back in? <laughs> well, Venus is exalted in Pisces. So what does that mean? So it means that Venus is very well placed in Pisces. So I think that having Saturn move into Pisces is also, you know, it's looking at the spirituality. Like what is spirituality? You know, if an open heart. Mm -hmm. you know, compassion caring for one another kindness kindness, kindness. right Aquarian brand of it yeah I think that it's more about love for fellow people you know versus the personal love the personal love will come up you know it's planets going to Libra more etc but the, when the node shift and the south node is in Libra it's, I think it's going to straight it's going to focus on what's wrong with relationships and what's what has to change. Mm -hmm. I, and we need a change. And I'd really, I'm, I welcome it. And I look forward to this year. I really do. I feel the energy is so good. Mm -hmm. Maybe because I feel, I don't know. It feels like it shifted. Do you feel that way, Claudia? I feel the shift. Yes. I think it started to shift right at the end of, you know, at the end of uh, yeah. you know, even at the, the end of December, like with the solstice energy, it mm -hmm. seemed to bring in something. New. But even at the end of the month, which is interesting, and and going back to Venus entering Pisces, it, right. it does that on January twenty sixth. So that'll be interesting because Neptune has been in Pisces as well. So Neptune's a higher octave of Venus, which means that it's you know really elevating. Um, love without expectation and that you know, comes on the 26th you say of so go into pisces 26th of january and then there's another very interesting aspect that happens at the end of the month like the 28th through the 30th there'll be a big grand trine in, uh, um, the, 
Tell me about it. I'm yeah, excited. that's right. So that'll be in your solar return chart for the year. So what so does you're gonna have some good aspects in your return chart for the year because all these planets are going to be direct. So after the 22nd, when Uranus goes direct, everything is direct till the end of April. So it's going to be a great time for us Aquarians. Yes. And for everybody, really, to move forward. It's like more here. clear. I mean, it doesn't mean there's not going to be challenges. You know, I don't want to give that impression at all. Right. I think 2023 is a good year. It's a year of hope and inspiration and new possibilities and sure. a shifting of energy. Yeah. And helping us know that the hard times we've been through, it's not always hard times, although they're, you know, life is life. You know, there's always going to be up and downs. And Yeah, but go know, back. Yeah, rewind. Rewind. Explain the, 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 uh, what. Okay, we're back here with Claudia Travellis, and we're talking about astrology. And I wanted to know about this trine on the 26th so explain what that really means or what that is exactly so i well, understand trying is more like the 28th through the uh, oh, 30th yeah, 30. the 26th is when venus goes into pisces and okay. it's actually the new moon energy okay. so i think that that energy on the 28th through the 30th is a good combination to this month of really looking inside and really gathering one's hope and inspiration. Okay. So the three planets are the sun. It will be, um, it'll be that the um, sun in Aquarius will be trying Mars and Gemini and will be trying this new dwarf planet, Maki Maki in Libra. Wow. And so it's an opportunity to really look at values take because at the same time mercury is going to try and, uh, uranus and taurus so mercury and capricorn will try and uranus and taurus so it's really looking at you know what's real what what is important you know what are our values what matters you know what do we want to see in the planet you know how do we want to how do we want humanity to grow mm. you know what's Important for all of us mm -hmm. and also it highlights the fact of um you know this mars having been in gemini and also the mercury trine uranus because uranus is the planet of breakthroughs and revelations so it's it's about um you know again the importance of our words our deeds and our actions okay boy it's really coming down to the nitty-gritty isn't it it is. Oh wow! <laughs> thing, though. Well, like, how do we want to contribute? You know, are we going to contribute in a negative way, or are we going to contribute in a positive way? Bottom line. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I'm really excited you came on today. We didn't get to talk in December, and I missed it. I missed our <laughs> our astrological forecast. It's probably good that I didn't know. <laughs> Sometimes it's better if you don't know. But January, I, I think is this it's such a great, great month. And this whole year is going to be such a fabulous year, 2023. I just feel really good about it. 2024, um, you say it's it's a I just want to touch on this really quick. You say we're preparing for 2024. And then I've had a lot of people say that they feel like the golden age is 2025. Is that yeah. is that kind of what you feel too? Yeah, because Neptune goes into Aries. You know, there'll be more of the shifting. Like it always takes Pluto a while to get moving. So right. even though it comes into Aquarius this year for three months and then goes back to Capricorn. And then in 2024, comes back into Aquarius. You know, it takes a while for that energy to get going. And the same thing with Saturn. You know, it'll come into Pisces, but it's got to sort of clean things out first, you know. Right. <laughs> It'll... So 2025, I think these next couple of years are really significant for the entire planet in terms of a major shift into a more, a more spiritual way of being. Yeah. Loving connection. Cool. Well, thank you, Claudia. I'm excited that you came on today and I sure appreciate it. And I'm looking forward to 2023. <laughs> well, happy new year. <laughs>
All right, you guys, we're going to get out of here for today, but this is High Road to Humanity. I wish everybody a happy and prosperous 2023. And don't forget to check out Claudia Travellis. Claudia, give your information. I always forget. If people want to get in contact with you. If they want a reading for the year, how do they find you? They can find, they can go to my website, discoveryourimprint.com. Uh, also known, my website also is called astrorebalancing.com. And I will look at your astrology as well as your human design chart and give you a real sense of where, you know, what's coming in for you in terms of the gifts and the challenges that may show up in the year ahead. She's really good too, by the way, you guys. So, hey, and if you want an angel reading, go to my website, nancyyearout.com to book and make sure that you check us out on, we're on YouTube now, we're on Binge TV now, and we're going to a new platform on the podcast. So it's going to be Libsyn. And so hopefully you guys will check us out there too. And um, I wish everybody again, a happy 2023. This is Nancy Yearout along with Claudia Trevellis and Everybody have a great week and God bless.